One of the most common tactics that Christians employ is to attack everyone and everything else rather than defend their own religious beliefs, and then pretend that those arguments somehow support your religion. Their favorite targets are atheism, the Big Bang, and the evolution of species. But there are a couple major problems with arguing in this way. The first is that Christians do not do it honestly. Instead of proving that atheism is illogical, they redefine atheism to be something that it isn't. And instead of debunking the Big Bang or the evolution of species, they ignore the scientific models and create their own versions, completely distorted and ridiculous, and then attack those. This is what is known as a straw man argument. It's dishonest and childish. And all it does is spread misinformation. So in case all you've ever heard is this misinformation, let me bring you up to speed. Atheism is simply the lack of belief in gods. It isn't anything more than that. It is not the belief that everything came from nothing, and it's not even the belief in the Big Bang or evolution. And it isn't a religion, and it's not an organization. There is no doctrine, there are no teachings, and there is no hierarchy. Atheists do not share anything other than the lack of belief in magical deities. Most atheists do accept science, but some atheists don't. Some atheists believe that we were put here by aliens, and some atheists believe that we're all in a simulation, and some atheists even believe that the earth is flat. Being an atheist just means that you don't believe in gods. Nothing more than that. The Big Bang Theory is simply a model that explains the origin and current expansion of our observable universe, based on the present data, and that's all. It has nothing to do with the beginning of time or the origin of reality itself. And it also has nothing to do with the cosmos that may have existed before the event of the Big Bang or the cosmos that may exist outside of it. So if you claim that the Big Bang is a theory that states that everything came from nothing, then you either know nothing of the Big Bang or you're being intentionally dishonest. The evolution of species is something that we observe when we look through the fossil record. The further down we dig, the more species we find that no longer exist, and the more we find that species that now exist didn't exist then. And the further down we go, the less complex the species are. And the fossil record shows that species don't suddenly pop into existence, and most of them never suddenly cease to exist, but rather have changed and diverged over the course of time. Each layer of the fossil record contains fossils of creatures that are both distinct from the layers above, as as well as the layers below. It reveals that species evolved over the progression of time. All of the species that exist now make up only about 1% of all of the species that have ever existed, and the current species all have definitive ancestors and relatives evident in the fossil record. That is what evolution is. It's not a harebrained idea, it's not a religion, and it's not an attempt to disprove the Bible. It is a fact, literally written in stone, under your feet. The second problem with this approach of attacking rather than defending is that even if Christians didn't strawman their opponents, their arguments against science or atheism still wouldn't support Christianity. Despite this, Christians somehow have it in their head that by debunking science, it would somehow be evidence of Christianity. But it doesn't work that way. If you somehow proved that atheism was completely stupid, it would have no impact on the validity of Christianity, Mormonism, or cow die. And if the entire scientific field turned out to be a giant prank, it would not prove that God exists, and it certainly wouldn't prove that Jesus did. Obviously, arguing against red is not evidence for blue, despite the fact that too many people, including Ken Ham and Kent Hovind, don't understand this. But there are a lot of things that they don't understand. Christians will argue that beauty and complexity in the universe are evidence that their specific God exists and created it all. But does that logically follow? If beauty or complexity were evidence that the universe was designed by gods, how is that evidence that it was their specific God, Yahweh? If creation was evident, we would still have no reason to assume that it was one God or two Gods, red God or blue God, much less the God of any specific religion. It wouldn't be any more evidence of Christianity than it would be for Taoism, Zoroastrianism, or Judaism. It wouldn't be evidence that whoever these creators were even wanted to be worshipped, or asked for there to be a religion surrounding them. It wouldn't be evidence that they listened to prayers, created an afterlife, or had a special place in their heart for humans, or even had hearts to begin with. Any argument for creation 
creation is at best an argument for deism. Not theism and certainly not any specific religion, whether it be Christianity or Scientology. But even with that aside, all the arguments that I've ever heard for creation are logical fallacies. Non sequiturs, arguments from ignorance, circular reasoning, appealing to emotion, black and white fallacies, and a host of others. The lack of data or understanding is always only ever the lack of data or understanding. It is an evidence of anything else. And not knowing something doesn't give you the right to make up an answer. Some Christians will come right out and admit that they can't provide evidence for Yahweh or Jesus, but they will claim that they have personally experienced some sort of spiritual encounter with the Holy Spirit, whether that be a trippy dream, a near-death experience, or some overwhelming rush of emotion. So is some redneck claiming to have been filled with the Holy Spirit evidence that Christianity is true, without video footage of lasers coming out of his butt or him suddenly and accurately mapping out the Andromeda galaxy or demonstrating actual superhuman abilities? No, not even close. Speaking gibberish is not evidence of the Holy Spirit either. I would consider it more of a miracle if people around here could speak halfway decent English, but I suppose that's too much to ask even from an all-powerful God. Claims of personal experience are nothing more than anecdotes. They can't be tested, they can't be verified, and they can usually be more easily explained by something ordinary. For example, surviving a car accident isn't very miraculous, despite what your Uncle Billy might say. Based on statistics from 2013, only about 0.57% of all car accidents are fatal, and that's due to engineers working day and night to make transportation as safe as possible, not Jesus Christ. And feeling an indescribable energy rush through your body while praying or singing in church isn't miraculous either. It's an adrenaline rush being triggered by your excitement. It's serotonin, dopamine, and oxytocin, not the Holy Spirit. The most revealing detail is that members of literally every religion and every denomination of every religion have claimed to experience similar spiritual occurrences. They aren't unique to Baptists, and they aren't unique to Christianity either. So unless all of these religions and religious denominations are simultaneously true, all of these miraculous personal experience stories are nothing more than people getting excited and mistaking completely natural events as something super supernatural. Just because Clarence claimed that he saw the Bigfoot doesn't mean I should take him at his word and ignore the fact that there are black bears in this area. And just because Karma thought she was abducted by aliens last night doesn't mean I should believe her without considering the fact that she was also tripping balls. And by that same token, I have no reason to believe that your personal experience with Jesus was any more miraculous, when it can easily be explained without magic. And when it is no more evidently divine than some Muslims experience with Allah, or some Hindus experience with Krishna, they can all be explained naturally, without having to assume that their gods exist. Another argument that I hear a lot is, I wouldn't want to live in a world without God, without prayer, without an afterlife, without forgiveness, etc, etc. But is this evidence that Christianity is true? Is the fact that you would prefer reality to be a particular way evidence that reality is in fact a particular way? Does reality conform to our desires? This is what is known as a moralistic fallacy. Basically, just because you wish that something were a certain way, or think that reality should be a certain way, does not make it so. Reality is not obligated to make you happy. And arguing that reality would suck if Christianity wasn't true, does not make Christianity true reality doesn't conform to our desires. Christians like to spam their opponents with Bible verses, as if quoting the Bible proves that the Bible is true. 2 Timothy 3.16 says that all scripture is breathed by God. But this type of argument is circular reasoning. It doesn't accomplish anything. 
There are thousands of holy books. New ones are always being written, and lost ones of antiquity are always being discovered. Nearly all of them claim to be absolute truth, inspired or written by gods, or were at least considered as such by their followers. The Quran, chapter 2, verse 2, says, There is no doubt in this book. It is a guide for those who guard against evil. Just because some human wrote that a book was divinely inspired is not evidence that that book is divinely inspired. Quoting the Bible does not prove Christianity any more than quoting the Quran is evidence of Islam, or quoting the Vedas or the Bhagavad Gita is evidence of Hinduism, or quoting the Tao Te Ching is evidence of Taoism. A lot of Christians won't even bother arguing for their religion. They'll just say, if I'm wrong about God, I'll be dead. If you're wrong about God, you'll burn in hell forever and ever and ever. This is what is known as Pascal's Wager, although most Christians don't even know that it has a name. They just heard their pastor say it or they saw it on a picture on Facebook. Pascal's Wager does not prove that Christianity is true, but it doesn't even try to. It just attempts to justify being a Christian. Either you're a Christian or you're an atheist, right? And only one of them threatens eternal damnation. So better safe than sorry, right? No. This sort of reasoning ignores the fact that there are thousands of religions, not one. So if you want to play the numbers game, you don't have two options, you've got at least 10,000. To make matters worse, even if you still choose Christianity out of the innumerable other theological possibilities, you've still got to choose from over 30,000 contradicting denominations of Christianity. Not to mention the thousands of ancient Christianities that died out when Catholicism monopolized Christianity and forged what we now have today. Matthew 7 says, not every Everyone who calls me Lord will enter heaven, but only those who follow the will of my Father. Broad is the road that leads to destruction, and small is the gate that leads to eternal life, and few there are that find it. So if you're just trying to gamble your way out of hell, the odds are against you. And even if Christianity were true, the odds would still be against you. With the infinite number of theologies, it would be impossible to play it safe, even if one of them were legitimate. Plus, what if gods do exist and they just never created a religion? Maybe they only want intelligence people in the afterlife, and not people who buy into man-made myths. Maybe they just want people who will be good for the sake of being good, rather than people who are only good because their religion says that they'll burn forever if they aren't. Playing the better safe than sorry game with superstition is childish. If there's no evidence for some sort of paranormal threat, there is no reason to live your life as if there is. Anything asserted without evidence can be rejected without evidence. Pascal's wager is the most worthless arguments Christians have ever used, and it reveals just how much Christians lack the ability to support or defend their own religion. Why is it that Christians rely on such bad arguments and wordplay? All of the arguments that I just went over encompass almost every one that I've ever heard. Yeah, there are more specific ones, but they generally fit in one of these categories and none of them prove anything or make a single valid point. And literally every single argument that I just went over could just as easily be implemented to argue for Islam or Sikhism or Hinduism. And in fact, they are used for these religions. If Christianity was true, why should it rely on interchangeable arguments? Why should it rely on logical fallacies? Shouldn't the arguments for Christianity be superior or at least unique to the arguments for Islam? Why are they literally the exact same arguments that every single other religion uses? And why is it that the best videos Christians can find to support their religion are from people like Greg Locke or Glenn Barrett or Louis Giglio or Ray Comfort? I'm like, how crazy is that? That the stuff that holds our bodies together is in the perfect shape of the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I drew a circle on a whiteboard like this. Could God not exist in a dimension that you haven't yet discovered? So the burden of proof is not upon me to prove that there is one. It's upon you to prove that there's not one. I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I love laminin. Behold the atheist's nightmare. The banana and the hand are perfectly made one for the other. It's just the right shape for the human mouth. 
Do you not see how desperate you are? If you had evidence that Jesus existed, you wouldn't resort to pointing to things that are shaped like crosses. Laminin is sort of shaped like a cross sometimes, so the Bible is true. Are you serious? Here's a cloud that looks like a dick. What do you think that means? These are the types of videos that get tens of millions of views. Is that not embarrassing? How do you expect me to take you seriously when the best you can do is share a video of Glenn Barrett drawing a circle and talking about a debate that never happened? A little while ago, I was invited to a university to speak at the Atheistic Society. So I went down, I won't tell you which university it was, but I drove to, to Cambridge, and when I got to Cambridge... Cambridge has no record of any event with Pastor Glenn Barrett of Audacious Church period. Quote, we did not invite him and this event did not happen. Did you know that you can write any God's name in that circle or actually literally anything? Christians do a better job of letting the world know that they don't have any evidence than I ever could. The truth does not rely on logical fallacies or lies and it doesn't have to resort to, well, what if it is true? but I've never seen or heard a Christian do anything other than these. Which is why at the end of every single discussion, the Christian will say, well, you've just got to have faith. Because no matter how hard they try, that's all that they're ever going to have. No matter how hard Christians try to find scientific or historical evidence to support Christianity, they never will, because it isn't there and because they will never escape the words written in their own holy book. As 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 says, For we walk by faith and not by sight. And just as Hebrews 11 and 1 says, Faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the conviction of things not seen. Faith is not evidence, it's the lack of evidence. It's nothing more than pretending to know something that you do not actually know. Hope and conviction are not evidence. They are the product of wishful thinking. If you have evidence, you don't need faith. And if you need faith, you don't have evidence. Every religion, every cult, and every superstition that have ever existed rely on faith. That's why every con artist, every holy book, and every witch doctor ask you to have faith in them. Faith isn't special, it isn't unique, and it isn't worth a damn. So if the arguments for Christianity are so freaking bad, why aren't Christians themselves aware of this? I suspect that they are. There's a reason that Christians isolate their family from the rest of the world. Even most Christian adults refuse to study anything outside of their own preconceived beliefs. They live in an echo chamber and surround themselves with people that agree with them. They listen to people who say what they want to hear, and if they read anything, they read stuff by people who they already agree with. They never challenge their beliefs. This lifestyle is only necessary if you realize that your worldview is so fragile that a single question could topple entire decades of indoctrination. If Christians were actually confident that their worldview was supported by evidence and that their arguments were logically coherent, they wouldn't be scared of hearing what anyone else had to say. They wouldn't be scared of criticism. They wouldn't have a reason to not pick up a book written by Dan Barker or Bart D. Ehrman or Carl Sagan. They definitely wouldn't be scared of my videos. And they certainly shouldn't be intimidated by the Quran or the Vedas or Edith Hamilton's mythology for God's sake. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.